what's up everybody let's look at the first round of the nba playoffs and here at the number one seed we have the toronto raptors who had the best season in the franchise history with 59 wins they're playing the number eight seed washington wizards john wall just back from injury this is gonna be a very tough matchup for both teams um toronto does have a bad playoff record um the only year they've been to the Eastern Conference Finals was the 2015-16 season, and they got destroyed by the Cavaliers, 4-2. to two. And this team has been... These guys, should be, these guys should have been going to the Eastern Conference Finals for three or four straight years, and they only went once. Because last year they got swept by the Cavs in the second round. And this year, I think they can do some good things, but you never know. Because of their playoff history. Um, and with John Wall coming off injury, coming back from injury, that is going to help Washington so much more. Because Otto Porter Jr. has really stepped up his game this year. Been playing, I mean, he's been a good player, but I'm, he's starting to take a leap into being a star on the team. And Kelly Aubrey Jr. really coming off the bench, really playing amazing off the bench, actually putting up 11 points a game, and he does everything well. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's getting one steal a game. And Toronto's just been phenomenal this year. Um, they've been a 51 team for, I think this is their third straight year? Or no, maybe it is only their, I don't know. But I'm going to predict that the, of course the Raptors are going to win it. I'm going to say, but you never know. There could be an upset. I'm saying like a 30% chance of an upset if Marcin Gortat can control Ibaka and Valanchunas on the defensive end and Markeith Morris plays amazing offense. There's a 30% chance of an upset, but I'm going to say the Raptors win this series 4-2. to two. It's going to be a grinder. Um, two tough teams. The Wizards do have a better three-point percentage throughout the season, but the Raptors have the second-best point differential. Um, I think they're second in points scored, and they allow, and they're six in points allowed. And they have the second-best point differential. Only, the only team ahead of them are the Houston Rockets. So hopefully, and Dwayne Casey has just been a great head coach for the Raptors this year. I really think he can pull it together and they can go deep into the playoffs. So there's my prediction for the Raptors and Wizards. Raptors in six, winning it four to two. And now we got the second seed, the Boston Celtics, versus the number seven seed, Milwaukee Bucks. And these these have been two very strange teams this year. Um, personally, in the offseason, I thought the Cavs won the Celtics trade when the Cavaliers sent Kyrie Irving to Boston and the Celtics got Jay Crowder, or the Cavaliers got Jay Crowder and Isaiah Thomas. I thought the Cavs won that trade, but during the course of the regular season, of course, we all know who the real winner was. It was the Boston Celtics, easily winners, as the Cavaliers have had a struggling season. But now that we're in the playoffs, the season has not gone that well for the Celtics. Their bench unit has been amazing. Brad Stevens has easily been the coach of the year with the injuries they've had to deal with. Gordon Hayward has missed the whole season. Um, he will be missing the playoffs. Kyrie Irving will be missing the playoffs after he injured his knee right before the playoffs in March. You have Marcus Smart who had to get surgery on his hand. He will be missing the playoffs or at least the first round of the playoffs. Then you got Daniel Theis, a very good center coming off the bench who's a rookie. Um, he will be out for the rest of the season with a torn ACL, I believe. So they have three, um, two superstars and a solid center missing the whole playoffs. And Marcus Smart missing the first round, at least the first round. So you have four huge pieces to a Boston Celtics playoff team. And four of them will be missing the first round. And even if they do win against the Bucks. They are still missing three guys. So these guys, the Celtics will not be going far. Um, there is a huge possibility of the Bucks upsetting them. And I personally have the Bucks have a fa as a favorite. Because the Bucks 
haven't had the whole season to play as a whole. They had a mid-season coaching change. They got Eric Bledsoe one, two months into the season. Jabari Parker came back midway through the season. Thon Maker, Matthew Delvadova, and... Um, let me look here. It was Thon Maker, Matthew Delvadova, and I think that might be it. Who came back up? Oh yeah, and Malcolm Brogdon, who all came off injury. And as we know, Malcolm Brogdon, amazing point guard, rookie of the year last year, six man for the Bucks. Um, so yeah, these guys have not played as a whole all year, and now that they got their head coach, Joe Prunty. Um, he's been there. He's been coaching now for a little bit. And now that they're going to have their whole team together with Don Maker, Delvadova, and Brogdon coming back for the first round, um, this is a very dangerous team. They could make the, they could possibly make the Eastern Conference Finals. But the NBA is really tough this year. Every team has a shot to make the NBA Finals. In the East, that is. In the West, there's a bit of a fight. But we all know who's really going to go. Even though the West is stacked. I feel like the East has some really good competition this year. The regular season records do not show it, but when you look at the injuries, that is the main reason why. Brogdon has missed a couple months. Delvadova missed a couple months. Thon Makers missed a couple months. Jabari Parker missed half the season. So now that Giannis and Chris Middleton have their have the whole team together, and Joe Prunty has been a very good interim head coach, and he I hope they actually sign him as a head coach for the future because Jason Kidd was a terrible head coach great player but bad coach so I actually have the Bucks winning this in six games four to two um, in fact I could see an earlier four to one in five games but I'm gonna say six games just because the Celtics are not that bad they're again Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum have just been superstars coming in and filling in for Kyrie and Gordon Hayward Terry Rozier has been amazing, coming in for Marcus Smart. Of course, they still have Al Horford, Aaron Baines, and Marcus Morris. So the Celtics team is not done yet. They could possibly make it into a seven-game series, but I'm going to say a six-game, and Bucks win 4-2. Um, I really can't see the Bucks losing this unless someone gets injured in the playoffs. Like Giannis, he has been having ankle injuries all season long, and if he misses even one game in the playoffs, that will be it for the Bucks. So there is my prediction for the Milwaukee Bucks and Boston Celtics game, with Milwaukee winning it four to two. Now we have the third seed Philadelphia 76ers against the six seed Miami Heat. This is going to be a very good matchup, especially because Joel Embiid is out after having to get um, in surgery on his face because his face collided with the shoulder of Markel Fultz and fractured an orbital bone in his face. I think that's near the eye. And he had to get surgery on that. He could miss the first round of the playoffs. But I'm pretty sure he might be coming back. They said they said it's iffy. It's unclear if he will return or will miss the entire series against the Heat. And that will be huge for Hassan Whiteside. But the only thing is the 76ers do have good backups in Rashawn Holmes, Amir Johnson, Dario Saric. They can take over for Joel Embiid. Of course, there's Ben Simmons, a superstar. He is the next LeBron. He actually could be better than LeBron, I I say. Ben Simmons is a special talent. I really didn't know how good he was going to be. I, I just thought he was going to be a mediocre player at first because I didn't really see a whole lot out of him. I mean... All he did was dominate high school and college at LSU. The um, NCAA tournament got, what do you call it? I'm going to say canceled. I don't really know what the word is for it. They couldn't play in the NCAA tournament because of um, hookers in the locker room. So that's what kind of made me iffy on Ben Simmons. But he has proved that he is going to be the next LeBron James. Everyone was saying that when he was in high school. But there's so many good high school players nowadays, it's just hard to say who's good and who's not. A lot of kids in high school could probably declare for the NBA draft. That's how good high school basketball is getting with all these AAU and after school programs, stuff like that. And high school teams are just playing each other country, nationwide. And Ben Simmons has proved himself. Dario Saric has proved himself. Saric was drafted way back when. 
and he was just a rookie in 2017 or 2016. I think he was drafted in 2014, 2015. Don't remember which year. So yeah, Dario Saric coming back on the Sixers. He has had an in sh um, elbow injury though, sadly enough. So he could possibly miss a game or two in the first round. Hopefully not, because if Saric and Embiid both miss the playoffs, um, I can say the 76ers are going to be making an early exit. But this is huge for the 76ers to be in the playoffs, especially as the third seed. Because just last year, or not last year, but the year before last year, they were considered the worst team in NBA history with all the injuries to their star rookies and them just being plain terrible. I kind of thought this was a tanking process. I knew they were tanking the whole time. Especially when Joel Embiid missed two whole years. Um, I mean, that is injury. That isn't re really the organization's fault or anybody else's fault. Just stuff that happens like Joel Embiid, New Orleans Noel, <clears throat> Ben Simmons, and Markel Fultz all getting injured, which sucks. But all of them are star players now. Well, not New Orleans Noel, but Embiid, Simmons, and Fultz, and Saric, all star players. Um, except for Fultz, I mean, he has potential to become a star, but he's been very good in his comeback f off of injury. Um, I'm, he's going to be a star. I'm saying it now. He's just been so good in the couple games he came back off of injury. And I think they kind of kept him off injury. Um, I feel like he could have returned to the NBA much sooner than what he did. But, oh well, time is time. He's going to be back for the playoffs. I can see the Sixers winning this in five, four to one. But I don't know. This Heat team is not that bad. They are missing Deion Waiters, but they've been they've been playing without Deion Waiters for a long time, and the Sixers have been on a huge winning streak without Joel Embiid. So I guess I'm gonna have to say the 76ers are gonna take this in five games, four to one. I could see it turning out to a six-seven game series because this Eastern Conference is just so competitive this year. So there you go, Sixers and five, four to one. <clears throat> now we have the fourth seeded Cleveland Cavaliers against the fifth seeded Indiana Pacers. Huge matchup. So let's see here. We do have some injuries as the Pacers have Trevor Booker. Um, he most likely will return though. And the Cavaliers have Kyle Korver and George Hill injured, but they're most likely not going to miss any of the games in the first round as Trevor, Trevor Booker. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup. You have the struggling Cleveland Cavaliers and the rising Indiana Pacers. Um, I, I can't see the Cavaliers losing this one. The Pacers just have nobody to guard LeBron James all seven games. Um, they could potential. I can see the Pacers getting two wins out of this because of Victor Oladipo and how good he has been. Darren Carlson, Bojan Bogdanovic, Miles Turner, especially a very young center who is really good. I love him. I mean, he has an outside shot to a rebounding big man. So. I can see the Pacers grinding out two wins in this series, making it six games, but the Cavaliers are just going to win flat out. Nobody on that team can guard LeBron James every game in the playoffs if they do turn into a seven-game series, which I highly doubt. And I feel like this team, because they've been playing the whole season, they've only played half the season together, just getting their chemistry down. I feel like this is the best Cavaliers team LeBron has ever had. Post Kyrie Irving, of course. Um, well, be without Kyrie Irving, I should say, because he was with the Cavs before Kyrie was drafted to him. And this is the best Cavaliers team he's had without Kyrie Irving. You have Kyle Korver, a great three-point shooter. George Hill, a 3-and-D type of player. Um, Rodney Hood, a really good shooting guard. I think the, ja the Jazz should have never played for him. <clears throat> or I mean not played for him the Jazz never traded him I have no idea why I said never played for him and Larry Nance Jr. has been an amazing young power forward so far in his short career 
Jeff Green, an amazing bench p- player coming off the bench. I can't see the Cavaliers losing this one to the Pacers. So I'm going to say the Cavaliers in five or six. I'm going to say in six, four to two. Wouldn't surprise me if they make the series shorter. And yeah, those are my first round playoff predictions. Hopefully, I am right and I'm not completely wrong. I feel like I'm going to be wrong on most of these. But you never know. Especially in the East, this is a pretty competitive division or conference. And that is it. I will see you all in the next video. I'll probably be making one on the West very soon here.